Now, I am going to discuss an ECG in trichospiratricia. The teaching is that if you see right atrial enlargement along with left axis deviation and a dominant left ventricular forces on ECG, you have to think of trichospiratricia if it is a cyanotic congenital heart disease. That is how you think of trichospiratricia from the ECG. Usually in a newborn, right ventricle is dominant because of persistence of the fetal pattern. In fetus, right ventricle is dominant as left ventricle receives hardly any blood from the lungs. Lung is not functioning. So, function of left ventricle is minimal in the fetus. That pattern is persisting in newborn also for a period of time till the left ventricle becomes more prominent and right ventricular musculature regresses. But if in a cyanotic heart disease you are seeing left ventricular forces, you have, here you can see very tall R wave with ST depression and T inversion, left ventricular hypertrophy with strain pattern. If that is seen in a cyanotic infant, you should think of tricuspid atresia because the other findings here right atrial overload, almost leftward axis, negative complexes in 3 and AVF. So, leftward axis, tall peaked P wave, suggesting right atrial overload. So, right atrium is overloaded because tricuspid valve is atritic. And right ventricle is not prominent because right ventricle gets hardly any blood. Blood is shunted from right atrium to left atrium across a atrial septal defect which is associated and needed for survival and from left atrium blood reaches the left ventricle which has the higher load and left ventricle pumps uh, aort to aorta and if sometimes there is an VSD it will pump into right ventricle also. If there is no VSD the whole blood goes into the aorta and then a PDA is needed for survival through a PDA it will come into the pulmonary artery. That is how they survive. So, these are the features. Leftward axis, right atrial overload, left ventricular dominance. In a cyanotic congenital heart disease would suggest tricuspid atresia. Then, you have a negative P wave in prominent negative in P1. Usually, when there is a prominent negative, you will think of left atrial enlargement. But here, it is not due to left atrial enlargement. This is a peculiar manifestation usually seen in uh, standard ASDs also. It's a peculiar manifestation that is the negative complex is not like a U-shaped. Usually in left atrial enlargement the negative component is broad and is U-shaped. Here it is not U-shaped. It is like a narrow V. And you can see that atrial intrinsic cord deflection is very sharp from the peak of the P wave to the nadir, it's a very sharp line. That does not occur when there is left atrial enlargement. In left atrial enlargement, it will be like a U pattern for the negative wave. Here, you are not seeing that. Very sharp deflection and the next upward deflection is also sh uh, sharp so that uh, you don't see the classical left atrial pattern in this case. This is another manifestation of right atrial overload and not left atrial overload negative complex, negative portion of the P wave due to right atrial overload, a prominent atrial intrinsic cord deflection. Sometimes you see such patterns in atrial septal defects also without Lutenbacher syndrome. In Lutenbacher, left atrium could be enlarged, but where there is mitral stenosis associated. Even without that, this type of pattern will occur in atrial septal defect, fairly common.